evening everybody. I'm going to do a pretty quick tutorial that was requested um, in the comments section of another tutorial that I just recently put out. This is by Power Girl Mania. She says, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm trying to do a scene with a guy holding a lantern, but when I get the get one from the 3D warehouse, I can't seem to have it dangle in his hand. Can you help me with the physics constraint? Um, which settings? I watched Small W Studio do it a long time ago. But that was iClone 5, and now it's totally different. Um, I do also remember this tutorial from Small W Studio. The concept is basically the same um, as we do it now. I'm going to use this prop. I believe this is the same one that Small W Studio mentioned. It's probably from the old 3D warehouse in SketchUp. Uh, you can find lantern props on Sketchfab. You can probably find them inside the Realusion store. Um, the key here is that they need two parts, the handle and the, uh, and the lantern itself. I'm going to remove the object animation. I think I had uh, originally yeah, some, some movement that was happening. So that's gone now. Um, I'm going to detach the two parts just so that we can keep them clear in our heads for now. So you have the lantern, which we're going to call the handle, and the lantern body. Lantern body, good. Uh, and then the two settings that you want to set. First, use the handle, set activate physics, set it to kinematic. Okay. Then you go to the lantern body, activate the physics, set it to dynamic. If I hit play, the lantern body is going to drop through the floor because there is no floor. There is no physics floor, and that's okay. The next step, very simple. We're going to go into the bottom of the, the physics, uh, the physics. Um, uh, menu and we're going to hit add constraint. We're going to add a very simple hinge constraint. I'm going to place it on the lantern body. See that little blue thing? Now it's trying to put it in all sorts of wonky positions. We're just going to add it in there and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to set all the rotation values to zero. And then we will see, okay. Now it's positioned in a way we're going to want the, the lantern to swing like this. Right, and so I'm going to need to move the hinge. Uh, let's take a look. We're going to need to move the, in this case, the, the Z value changed. We're going to set it to 90. And then we're going to position it so that it's right where the handle um, rotates. So doing a just basic guess, we'll put it right here. And then I'm going to actually. Let's look at the front. Let's look at the back. There we go. Um, we might lower it a little bit to there. Okay. And then I'm going to change position to the left and I'm going to put it about in the center. About here. Something like that. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look. And if I hit play right now, no, it's going crazy. Why is that? Uh, well, first off, I need to set the target of the dynamic, the lantern body. I'm going to set the target to the handle. Okay, so we've changed that from the world. We've now made it a local target, which is the handle. Let's see how it looks now. Oh, and all of a sudden we're getting some very soft... It's swinging just a little bit there, looking roughly like it's supposed to. Okay. So I'm going to hide my hinge and I'm going to load in a character. Um, so I hide that hinge. I'm going to grab a character. Do do. I think I was using uh, HP Lovecraft. I have a little HP that I was playing with. Let's see if we can find him. And this guy. They'll load the textures. It'll take a half second. While we're doing that, I'm going to go back. I'm going to now attach the lantern body to the handle, okay? Because I want to move them both as one uh, when we're not um, playing. Sorry, give me half a second. Lantern body attached to the handle, okay? Then I'm going to grab the lantern and I'm going to position it 
in our HP Lovecraft in his hand. Now, because it's physics and because your characters have um, what's called there we go uh, collision shapes, it would go crazy right here because it would be bouncing on the collision shape. So what we're going to do. First off, remember this part. I said if you attach it, it gave problems. So remember, let's link it. We're going to link. We'll call this lantern handle. Uh, pick the parent, the hand. Let's see. See what I mean? Didn't like that because of the collision shape. This is very simple to fix. We grab our HP. Let's first off close his hand so that it looks like he's gripping our handle. And then let's just move his hand up out to the side as so. There we go. About like that. Okay. Now our HP has the lantern and it swings just a little bit and it's attached to his hand which is all good so let's add some motion to our character we're going to give him a basic walk uh, there's lots of different ways to do this and I've uh, and we're gonna uh, mask out his hand in this particular instance let's see space to record now uh, it's bouncing around a good bit That's okay. I'm just going to let this record the whole way through. And there's a couple of options that we could do here. We can change the rotation of the hand so that the swinging is going back and forth instead of side to side at where it's hitting his leg a lot. Let's let it finish. There we go. And give it half a second while it finishes. There we go. So, like I said, we could simply change the rotation of the hand to like this. Now, let's see what that looks like. All right, that's not bad. It's swinging a fair amount, and one of the things that you could do is limit, put some limits on that hinge constraint. There's some other things. Let's go back, take a look. Here's the hinge. We go into there. Currently, it's set with a limit of negative 90 and 90. Maybe we want to set it to negative 30 degrees and 30 degrees, which would limit that a good bit. So if it hits that limit, it'll, it'll stop the swinging, let's say. See it there? See how it, it's, it's hitting that limit, keeping it a little bit further down there? There's some other values here. Um, I don't know that they're um, useful for the hinge constraint. I haven't seen anybody using bounce, stiffness, and dampening. And when I try to change them, when I use a soft limit and I change this to its maximum value, as well as dampening, I don't see any changes. So I'm not sure that they're actually doing anything um, with the hinge constraint, so I think you you might be constrained ha, 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 to just the rotational values, the limits there. Um, if you don't want it to have that limit, you just could sim simply set it to the last one here, which is free. Let's see what that looks like. It's gonna swing a good bit, but maybe that's not a problem. Um, and you know, let's let's go ahead and change some of these textures and give it a light since it's a lantern. We'll come down here, lantern, blah, blah, blah. Let's give me, it's metal. So easiest way to change that metal. Let's brighten that up. Let's darken this one. There we go. Now it starts to get some good glare on it as if it were metal. And then I'm going to go into the glass and let's just change that from a white to a yellow. Maybe not that much. Yeah, whatever. Maybe like that. And give it some self illumination because I want to use some glow. I'm going to glow it up. There we go. You could have some kind of a flame inside. Maybe you would use um, a. Uh, 
I forget what it's called, the, the flames that are available in various places, but let's turn off our lights. Let's go into our... Doo -doo. Right here. There we go. Okay. And let's go ahead and change the background to something dark, darker. All right, that's not bad. What happens if we come back to the lantern? Maybe make it a little, a little more glow up, a little more um, illuminated. Uh, bounce strength. What was it? to get a quick look at the GI the range is fine global illumination settings ambient strength not going to change anything but bounce strength will that's probably too high right but in order to get his face there all right let's take a look at that so that's it right there basically um, Remember, the handle is going to be kinematic, and the body of the lantern is going to be dynamic. Uh, use a hinge constraint on the body to the um, handle, and really, those are the, that's the that's the key part of this. Uh, I will do. I want to show you one other thing here that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, let's grab our guy. And let's duplicate him. And pull him over to here. And then let's grab our lantern scene. And let's pull it over, duplicating it. Give this guy. Now, one thing I was thinking about is what if both the handle and the lantern itself were able to swing? Because Think about when you're holding um, something, the lantern for instance, it would generally swing in your hand a little bit. And to do that, what you'd have to do is have both the lantern be dynamic, the handle be dynamic, and then you would put some kind of prop in the guy's hand, which would be kinematic. So I'm going to just very quickly show you what I'm talking about. And then we can compare the two and see what you think. Um, let's grab a prop. Template props, sure, whatever. We can use a ball, uh, shrink it down, and let's put that in his hand. A little hard to see. Let's go ahead and turn on our. Um, there we go. Auxiliary lights for the moment. Come in here. I want to put it right in the ball of his hand. That's fine. Now, I set this prop, activate the physics, turn it on to kinematic, and then attach it. Well, remember, let's not attach, let's link to his hand. So now he has a kinematic prop on his hand. Let's go back into our lantern. And the lantern body is dynamic. Let's look at it. It has a hinge that goes uh, to the handle. The handle is kinematic. Let's change that to dynamic. Okay. And then let's add a constraint. on what is basically the handle. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to change those rotational values to zero. I want it to swing with Z there. Uh, I'm going to change, pick the target which is this ball. OK. 
turn. And let's see. Did I get this to work? Yes, I did. Now you can see it swings a lot more. Um, and maybe that's not what you want, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, let's get rid of this auxiliary light. There we go. Now let's turn that down. It's, I think my GI settings are a wee bit too high. Uh, content, visual, close this. Shadow details, shadow bias, interesting. So it definitely adds a lot more swing here, right? We would hide that hinge. So perhaps the first version is what you would want. It's a little more under control, but having the, the two sets here dynamic to dynamic to um, the ball that's hidden in his hand adds a different characteristic to it. So two ways that you could do it there. Um, also another thing to think about um, I've, in previous uh, tutorials I've talked about ways to position props. So what you could do is you could put the lantern um, attach it actually not to or link it not to his hand but to something like his spine or his hip or even the root and then use the um, uh, the reach target on his hand to that link which would give it a different kind of vibe um, something that I explored in a previous tutorial about holding a tray um, you can look that up so other ways there's some other things that we could do with this but I just thought I'd throw two things together the basic key, again, one more time, is you use on the body of the lantern dynamics physics. On the, the handle of the lantern, you use kinematic physics. The hinge prop connects the body to the handle, and then you link the, um, you link the main prop to the character's hand. All right, so that's going to do it. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, have fun. Happy filming and good luck.